All right. Now, uh, going around the country at the moment, uh, and um, it's created quite a bit of foamy into natural facts, is National Party have, a, believe it or not, a hunting and fishing spokesman. Yeah. You, know, you think, oh, why would the National Party have a hunting and fishing spokesman? They didn't have one when I was there. Uh, Todd McClay. And he is, oh, I think he's on their front bench or pretty close to it. He's usually been there. Son of Roger, former Children's Commissioner and former National MP. Um, and he has been going around the country talking to gun owners about the changes that are being proposed for gun owners or new gun laws in this country. Um, to take us through those, now, most of these, I might add, gun laws, as I understand, are actually as a result of the massacre that happened, oh, gosh, now, oh, uh, exactly four years ago almost, uh, in Christchurch, obviously, by that madman who should have been put to death himself, uh, Brenton Tarrant. But as a, cost, a consequence of that madman going mad, um, that murderous evil individual, um, now firearm licences are going are being proposed f um, and they are going to cost an awful lot of money. Joining us to talk about this issue is Peter Henderson, representative of the New Zealand Deer Stalkers Association, but also, as I said, a hunting guide himself. Peter, welcome to the show. Good morning to you. Yeah, good day, Michael. How's that? Good. Um, now, tell me first of all, what are the change? Are they when you say they're being proposed? Have they happened, or are they gonna happen? And what are they? So the New Zealand Police have put a proposal for an uh, increase in firearms fees. So when you apply for your firearms license. Currently, uh, it's about um, for a, a person who's doing applying for their um, a renewal, it's about one hundred and twenty-six dollars for a new license for a new person who's just getting into shooting or hunting or whatever who's applying for a firearms license. It's about two hundred and thirty or something like that. So the police have basically said, you know what, we just can't afford to, um, you know, cop all this. Uh, we we need to increase the fees, and so they put a proposal out there as far as the increases and it's effectively going from 126 to nearly 750. Uh, it's yeah. ridiculous that they're, and, and even a new license is nearly close to a thousand bucks for a new person who's applying to get a firearms license. Now if you consider that they say oh but we haven't uh, increased the fees for the last 20 years well whose fault's that? Maybe you know if any normal person, any normal business owner would have said, you know what, every year with inflation we're going to increase the fees by 2%. Well, even if they increased the fees by 2% from for 20 years, the actual license owner uh, for, a, for a firearms license would only be now about $220 for a, 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 new, a new license. You know, that's going with a 2% increase in inflation. And so... Where do you get seven hundred and sixty dollars, or nearly a thousand dollars, for? It's almost like the police threw three darts at the dartboard, and one was a seven, one's a twenty, and one's a six. Oh, great! Let's make it seven hundred and twenty-six dollars for a new license. Because when you say to the police, "Can you please explain to us and tell us how you got this increase?" They won't. Now I know we've NZDA and others have approached the police and said. Where did you get these fees from? Where did you get these figures? How did you come up to this amount? And we're getting nothing. They're not even, they're not, they're not, they won't even talk to us. So, you know, it's just like... Sorry, you know, are you saying... Politics. So you're, this is the New Zealand Deer Stalkers Association. You're a reputable hunting group. You've been together forever. Are you saying that your representatives are not able to converse with the New Zealand police on this issue? That is exactly right. We've gone to the New Zealand police and said, so could you just explain to us where you've got these figures from? And we're getting nothing. And it's not just for fees for, you know, a massive, massive increase. It's, you know, 300% increase and for your firearms licence fee. Um, it's not just firearms licences. It's all sorts of people, uh, dealers, um, people who are making ammunition, people who are importing parts. The cost that they've, um, they're looking at imposing on firearms owners and users 
it's just astronomical. Uh, you just scratch your head. You have to look at it. You know, some person who say they they dress up as a historical type um, person, you know, military uh, person. They might wear a you know a, an old British military uniform and have a an inert firearm that, and they go to a warbirds over Wanaka and set up a military outpost. And that they're going to get charged a thousand dollars just to do that. They, they make can nothing I, from it. They're doing it purely. Can I ask a life. question of you as a as a and non gun owner? Yeah. And most of us are, Peter. Yeah. At the moment. Um, I actually looked at purchasing a gun once, only because I came to Central Otago and I thought we were going to be living in a sort of slightly rural area, more rural than Cromwell, obviously, um, and I thought about purchasing a twenty two. So I went through the Arms Act and all that and realised, my God, it's a hell of a rigmarole to get one. I mean, I was almost dissuaded by the process, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm registered as I'm registered, so Michael Laws is registered, Peter Henderson's registered, but the guns I purchase... Are they registered? No, it's just me, is it? Yes, that's correct. And right, you know, so to be I fair, the police, yeah, carry uh, on. The, the police are looking at, you know, they're bringing in a register sometime within the next sort of few months, six months or sort of thing. So we're, all firearms are to be registered. The reality is it's a waste of time. It's a complete and utter waste of time. Currently, Why is it a waste of time? For example, because but how yeah. how you have to think how will it solve solve crime? So let's say someone breaks into my house and steals some of my rifles or all my guns. What are they yeah. going to do? They're baddies, right? They're criminals. These, these are probably mm. gang members or whatever. They're more likely cut the barrel off or cut it down so it's more user friendly to so, to hide up inside their jacket. They'll probably cut the stock off and they'll probably angle grind the serial number off. So. Yeah. Even if the police recovered that firearm, they can't actually tell you who necessarily it belonged to. And even if they did, they're not going to give it back to you. So the fact, mere fact that they've registered my guns, all I'll be able to say is, hey, listen, these guns have been stolen. And they'll say, great. But will it necessarily solve crime? No. Will it necessarily help anything? Other than the fact that they know they've been stolen, they don't, it won't help them any, anywhere. So, and for a police officer who says, well, we're coming around to check this person. Well, they already know I'm a firearms license, a firearms license owner. All firearms licenses are instantly red flagged by the New Zealand police in their computer system as firearms owners. New Zealand firearms owners aren't the ones shooting at police. We're not the ones doing ram raids. We're not the ones selling meth and, and, produ and having, uh, selling drugs. You know, 99.9% .9 of good law-abiding firearms owners are doing everything right, but yet we're being punished by the police or the government because of the sport and the, the, you know, our interest. And you have to look at it and you think, what's a register going to do? Well, how is it going to solve crime? How is it going to save people, make New Zealand safer? Canada so, had so a, let me get this right. What, so, so Peter, you don't billion. mind being registered? You don't mind being registered as an individual? You, 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 that's okay. So we all, you've we got are. to be. We are. Though. Yeah, that, I understand that. So you've got no problem with that. Your argument is you don't yeah. want to register the guns, but why couldn't you provide that information anyhow to the police? So if you had four or five guns, just say here they are, and here's the serial numbers. I mean, uh, is the problem so, for you mostly? So I already have that, that information. You then, but wait on. Is the is the is the problem mostly for you that you'd have to pay to give them that information? Well, not necessarily, but the mere fact that all of a sudden they have all this information and all your details on a computer system where, and we've already seen it, police have broken the law, they've sold information to gangs, they're gang affiliated, and they, those police officers have sold information to gangs. So, and people have hacked uh, police information and records and, again, passed it on to gangs. So now, let's just say that all that information is stored on a computer and some person somewhere pushes the wrong button and sends out that information to everyone. Yeah, but you could say that now, about everything. You could say that about your medical records. Got. Yeah, but, you could, but Peter, you could say that about your medical records. You but could it's, say it's that about a shopping your dental list, records. isn't it? Well, yeah, no, yeah, but, but no I mean, that's not a very good argument, I don't argue. What sort of dental records I've got. 
Yeah. Yeah, but, but no your, gonna, your medical you know, records could go the same the way. Your kids' educate schooling records. I mean, there's, a, you know, you're dealing with um, Oranga Tamariki or, you know, your police records if you've had a domestic with your wife or something like that. I mean, at the end of the day, Oh, that that isn't the strongest argument I would have thought. That um, you're scared that the if police won't have the, sufficient to, um, data security. Yeah. Well, we've well, already seen seen that it hasn't, and it's already we've already lost information. They've already been caught passing information onto gangs. So, is it going to be secure? Well, it might be for a period of time until someone slips up, until something happens. And it's just a matter of time, because it will happen. But you know, at the end of the day, I guess we have to look at it uh, from our perspective and go, is it going to make New Zealand safer? The reality is, for the New Zealand police or the local police officer who comes around to my house, does he really care that I've got five rifles or eight rifles or ten rifles and what type they are and what they can do? Probably not. All he needs to know is that I'm a law-abiding licensed firearm owner who has some firearms. I suppose the, the police argument is actually related to domestic. So a lot of work that police do is domestic violence related. They're usually called to a domestic scene. Um, and some of those can get a bit hairy at times. Is the argument that if they're going to remove guns from somebody that they deem as a risk, Peter, that they want to know what those guns are? Then... You could also argue the point here and say, when the, um, what was that bloke's name who shot the place up down in Aramoana, um, whatever his name was, him, he was the catalyst that brought in the new rigged elections to basically anybody who had semi-automatic military style would have to have an E-category firearms licence. So mm. the police knew full well that that guy was a schizophrenic. He was taking drugs. He was not um, a good person to have firearms. And they were told about it. They did nothing to act on it. And in the end, he shot up a whole bunch of people and killed a whole bunch of people. This guy um, here in uh, Christchurch, he shot at the mosque. Exactly the same thing. The police did not act upon it. And they didn't do their job properly. The guy in Wellington, um, what's his name, Jan Mollier, a known deal drug dealer and um, you know, gang affiliate with arms bosses. Oh, yeah, might have been, yeah. But they knew full well he had firearms. And what did they do? Nothing. Well, not until it was too late. And then they did the wrong wrong thing for a starter, and he shot up a whole bunch of people again. But the police just seemed to not act on anything. Had they have acted on the information that they had, well, perhaps those wouldn't have happened. It just um, seems no. like uh, we're easy targets now. All right, uh, we're heading into an election. I've noticed, as I said, that National actually have a hunting and fishing spokesman, which is very unusual, so obviously they consider it an issue. Um, what assurances have you received from Todd McClay on this issue? Well, interestingly, I was at his meeting on Friday, last Friday night and um, met Todd and had a good chat to him, uh, him and Joseph Vini, and um, both nice guys. Um, Basically, Todd explained that he had put a, uh, we're putting together a portfolio um, for hunting and fishing uh, to represent hunters and shooters and the likes. Um, it was going back to the cabinet for them to look at and, you know, approve, I guess. So he didn't really give us a huge amount of details uh, on that. So, you know, the jury's still out until such a time as we see what they're willing to do and what they're willing to come to the party and, you know, support us. Um, you know, there's an awful lot of things that we hunters and shooters are looking at that we think we're being pretty much shafted here um, massively um, at no fault of ours. Um, so until they come to the party and have a look and, and review what we're looking at and what we're saying, who can say? It's, I guess it's a good idea. I mean, at the end of the day, we need to have someone in... Uh, in Parliament who's going to support us and represent us. Okay, well, um, yeah, I, I hear that. I mean, there's a whole lot of people saying that at the moment, but at the end of the day, there's only certain parties that will get into elected into power and certain that won't. Um, 
I think the Freedom and Outdoors Party, for example, that Sue Gray ran um, was for a wee while taking up gun rights there, but um, that's certainly not going to get elected to Parliament. Um, which of the political parties do you feel understand this issue, have policy to meet the issues that you raise? Well, again, I mean, until Todd um, comes out and actually lets us know what they're proposing, it, it's a bit difficult for for the likes of hunters and shooters to make an informed decision in that scenario. But at the moment, um, you know, we're very... I, I personally feel we're very fortunate to have the likes of Nicole McGee, um, who's part of the ACT Party, who mm -hmm. is a hunter and a shooter, who understands what we're going through, because, you know, she's gone through it as well. So she's a, a fantastic voice and a very, very pro-hunter and shooter um, spokesperson. We're very, very lucky to have her. She is raising a lot of issues that, you know, our government are throwing at us that, well, really, they shouldn't be. So, All right. Yeah, I think, personally, okay. I think um, ACT's the way to go for, for us. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for being interviewed on this, Peter, and for explaining the background to it. We'll see what people think. But I appreciate the time and Good. the energy that you've advocated for your cause. Good on you. Uh, that is, as I said, Peter Henderson. Good stuff. Thanks, he is a, th Thank you. Uh, he's a hunting guide um, and as representing New Zealand Deer Stalkers Association. That's quite a lot of money, isn't it? 126 to 750, 230 to almost $1,000. This would be well beyond the rate of inflation to get to there. Um, I wonder why it would need to go to that. I, and the other thing is... Can I just say this? If I was the police, I'd be wanting to make that process as simple as possible to get my public policy aim, which is to register as many gun owners as I can, um, and guns presumably as well. I'd be wanting to make that system really easy um, and reducing as many barriers as I could because there are public policy imperatives that drive this policy. It's a bit like, you know, if they raise... Can I just give you an analogy? A lot of dumps, what do they call them, waste transfer stations, are raising fees, or the councils that run them are raising fees. And you go... And for most of us, we moan about it. We go, oh, for God's sake, it used to cost me, you know, $10 to get rid of all the rubbish, or $5, and now it's suddenly gone to $25, and I've only got three bags, and, you know, that sort of stuff. And what happens when that happens, is that there are a group of people who go, well, I'm not going to pay that, and they just fly tip. So you find that fly tipping, as it's called, um, just rubbish being indiscriminately heaved into the countryside, becomes a real issue because you've made it more expensive and um, you've created more of a barrier to doing the right thing. Well, you'd think that might just happen here, eh? Just quietly.